We begin this hour with time quickly running out for leaders in Congress to strike a deal to fund the government. And with only six days left until a possible government shutdown, House Speaker Kevin McCarthy is failing to secure enough votes within his own party. Just yesterday, on a conference call with House Republicans, he told the right-wing holdouts that, quote, now is not the time to work against me. Five of those far-right members have already blocked a procedural vote on a defense bill twice and plan to hold their ground unless their long list of demands are met. We will have to wait and see what happens on Tuesday when McCarthy's leadership once again is put to the test. He plans to resume voting on a minibus, which is a series of appropriations bills. No matter the outcome, one thing is for sure. Speaker McCarthy's House of Cards is crumbling. In the past week, congressional Republicans have called their own party dysfunctional, a clown show, a soap opera, an unmitigated disaster. And in a rare show of bipartisan Demo bipartisanship, Democrats agree. Listen to what the chairman of the Democratic National Committee, Jamie Harrison, had to say on the show yesterday. I believe that history will show that Kevin McCarthy is the most inept speaker of the House in my lifetime. I have never seen the dysfunction. And I worked, I worked on the floor of the House. He's weak and he's feckless. I think he just wants a portrait in the speaker's gallery. Joining me now on set, California Congresswoman Maxine Waters, ranking member of the Financial Services Committee. Congresswoman Waters, thank you very much for coming back to The Sunday Show. I'm delighted to be here, and this is a good time uh, to be here to warn the American public what is about to happen in their government. What is about to happen? We're headed for a shutdown. The Republican Party is in complete disarray. It is chaotic. Uh, the speaker is on his knees begging, but he sold his soul uh, when we had 15 roll calls that was taken in order for him to get to be speaker. And now he has no control. We're headed for a shutdown. Um, I was going to ask you your assessment of, of Speaker McCarthy's leadership, but I don't think leadership... Uh, uh, pertains to him, given what you just said. No, he's pathetic uh, to the fact uh, that we know that not only is he begging on his knees, uh, the other day he cursed and said, you know, to his people, all right, if, if you're not going to support me, put a motion up uh, to get rid of me. Uh, vacate the chair. What are you going to do? He doesn't know what he's doing. It is more than pathetic. And for those who are following uh, the Republican Party, those who belong to the Republican Party, they should be very concerned about what the Republican Party is doing to this country and to this government. Well, I mean, yes, he did. He did say um, <laughs> uh, uh, the F word and you know, yes. file file the effing thing is, right. is what he said in terms of the motion to vacate. That's right. But let's say, I mean, he's daring them. Um, uh, uh, other people within the Republican Party uh, who are allies of the Speaker are also daring them, do it, do it. The question, though, becomes, what do you do, Congresswoman Waters, if that motion to vacate is put on the floor? Will you, will other Democrats vote to save Kevin McCarthy? Uh, I cannot speak uh, for the leadership, and I think Chairman uh, Jeffries has said, let's see what happens. But I, for one, am not prepared to save him. Not at all. Not with the cuts that they're proposing. They are devastating this country. They are undermining uh, children and veterans and seniors with the kind of cuts that they're proposing, and they're literally almost eliminating education in this country. Um, I, that reminds me, Congressman Boyle, the ranking member on the Budget Committee, yes. I think he said that in, in one of the—Congressman um, uh, Matt Gates is proposing cuts as high as 23 percent. Oh, cuts. yes. Oh, absolutely. And when you take a look at what they're doing, it shows that, you know, the Republicans who have claimed patriotism, claimed that they love this country— they don't care if they will allow seniors and veterans not to be able uh, to get their disability checks, for example. They don't care if they would allow education to be dismantled in this country. They don't care. If they don't care about the people sleeping on the streets, the homeless, and they're cutting housing vouchers, they're not patriots. They are basically not only disrupting this country, they're destroying it. 
and they cannot claim patriotism anymore. We, who fight for the people, claim patriotism. We're the patriots, not them. For the Republicans, patriotism is lost. It's gone. Um, it, we, the, in a new NBC poll that is out to date, uh, just now, um, you know, they like to claim patriotism, yes. but they also like to claim um, that they're the party of fiscal responsibility. Um, and yet, in the NBC News poll that's just out, 46% of those um, surveyed voters prefer a Democratic-controlled Congress versus 45% who prefer Republicans, which, so that's essentially a tie. Given everything that you just said about what Republicans are trying to do, why is it that they are at parity in the eyes of the American people in terms of fiscal responsibility, which then speaks to overall governance? Well, you know, one of the things that's happened in the Republican Party is they've been led on the issues that are so emotional. The Republicans have led them on abortion and, uh, you know, burning the flag and all of these kinds of issues that keep them, you know, upset and thinking that somehow uh, their patriotism is being undermined. But, in fact, the people oftentimes don't know that this Republican Party protects the richest people in this country from being able to pay their fair taxes. And in this budget that they're proposing, they continue to do the same thing. Biden has said, no, you're going to pay your fair share of taxes. I'm the president. I'm going to not only advocate this, I'm going to work for it. But the average person does not know really how bad it is. And so we've got to keep educating and exposing and let the people know who is for the least of these, who's for working people, or who's protecting the rich and Wall Street. I got to get you on two, on yes. two things in the um, little time that we have. Yes. Also, a, 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 um, something out of the NBC News poll uh, shows that 56 percent of voters oppose a, um, the, this impeachment inquiry into, into President Biden. 56% of the, of, of the voters op oppose this. So why are, why are Republicans doing it? Well, it's a sham. And first of all, they're trying to appease the MAGA element uh, of the Republican Party and get revenge for the fact that we impeached twice their President Trump. And so the people know that they don't have any facts. They have not done any investigation. Uh, and it's going to fall apart. It's not going to work. And one more, one more question for you. Just your thoughts on the idea that the front runner for the Republican presidential nomination is a twice impeached, four times indicted on 91 counts former president who is out on bail or bond in four different jurisdictions. Well, and not only that, who's aligned with Putin and Russia and who's telling uh, the Republicans to shut down government. And you wonder why. And it's pathetic uh, that somehow he has caught their imagination. He's plugged in in some way, but it's all going to be um, dismantled. It's going to be a fall in the house of cards. And they're going to eventually learn. Right now, they're still believing, still being led, but it's not going to last, believe me. Congresswoman Maxine Waters <laughs> of the great state of California, thank you very much for so being live on the Sunday show. Well, I'm delighted to be here and let the people know that Trump is not in favor of this country progressing and being the country that leads the world. We've got to deal with it. We've got to do something about it. I should have said all the way live on the Sunday <laughs> show. Thank you very much. You're